Today on Overwatch This, it is our BlizzCon prediction special. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Overwatch This. It is your host Joel, as usual, with star of the show, Ben. Star of the show, yes. 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 Star of the show. Um, so we are going to talk about one thing for the most part today, and that is BlizzCon. So, yeah, it's BlizzCon all the way today, basically. Um, we're going to start with things that we know, and I'm putting that in sort of air quotes because we know them, like, almost for sure. It's like 95%. Uh, yeah, or, or more with some of them. I mean, so we got the only place to start is the place we've been so many times over the past few weeks, and that is Sombra. She just keeps coming back like, she, a, she does. like a computer virus. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Gosh, yeah. I wish I was dead. Um, so basically, Sombra will be announced at BlizzCon, probably at the start in the opening ceremony. Yeah, pretty much. So, like the opening ceremony at BlizzCon, pretty much breaks down. Is Mike Morheim comes out and says we've had a great year because they've pretty much had a great year every year since they started doing BlizzCon. Um, he talks about liking the community and how excellent it is. There'll probably be some mention of uh, Chris Metzen or someone like that, and then they'll go into announcing stuff. And for Overwatch. Um, what we expect to see, certainly, is that they'll show some amount of a trailer for, for Sombra. Okay, yeah. So, if if it follows the pattern of Anomari, which we sort of no reason to think it won't, but at the same time, we do only have one piece of previous evidence to go on, so it might not. It has 100% happened right so yeah, far. Yeah, but of one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the end yeah, exactly. is one. So, then in that case, we'll get a couple of trailers, one showing kind of her background and one showing what she does with evidence of her doing it in some game scenarios that's what we got before right yeah pretty much so you'll get like one that's like her lore that show they called it an origins trailer for anna where it's like her superhero origin story mm -hmm. basically it's how did she end up the way she is who does she work for what side of the conflict is she on um and you know little little tidbits of information about her character and uh, who she knows in the world and that sort of thing and then another trailer that is purely gameplay focused that will show you know some number of her skins all of her abilities um and it'll be like it, it won't be like oh here how here's how she actually plays in the game it'll be set up scenarios where they yeah, go exactly. here is how this ability works at an optimum scenario yeah, where you can use this it. is the ideal world version of it that'll never actually happen in real life yeah exactly, it it's all do. chaos yeah um so we know a bit about because of this interminable arg and so new leaked concept art we kind of do know what she's going to look like the concept art that was leaked uh three weeks ago seems to have been pretty much correct in its leakiness <laughs> yeah yeah so there was the leak a few weeks ago which i think we talked about at the time and that we've been using that image a few times whenever we discussed sombra um which was her with the uzi purple coat um undercut looked a bit like laura from street fighter um and another image leaked um, we're pretty sure it wasn't deliberate. It seemed to come via the Blizzard Gear store. Um, basically, some new information got uploaded to that, and somebody didn't set it private, as we've all done. Um, and then there was that, along with the Diablo thing that we'll discuss a little bit later, uh, that pretty much confirmed, yes, that's what she looks like. So that then proved that the other bit of concept art that maybe it could have been you know faked could have been photoshopped that was real as well yeah so we know that she's she wears this kind of big purple coat um she's got an uzi as her main weapon she's got this really cool undercut um and her legs are made of code yeah i don't know how that works that i don't think that would sort of help her run around the map or get you know good elevation it's, it's for... gonna be it's gonna be difficult to jump yeah on just letters it's, and numbers interesting musculature legs of code um yeah she you know she looks she looks all right she looks a bit more kind of edgy she than looks a lot like of... an overwatch character yeah she like, looks like a sort of edgy overwatch character who's watched the matrix a lot i think um several like one of those people that just kind of watched it on loop throughout yeah, the 90s that, yeah that's basically what she looks like so you know, we'll see, uh, as we say, we'll see her in action. And then you, lucky devil, will probably get a nice hands-on uh, at BlizzCon on the show floor. Yeah, it's going to be so weird as well because, like, there's just going to be, like, six Sombras on every team, right? Yeah. At least for, like, the first day. Yeah, absolutely. Unless they, like, also put in a bunch of balance changes. But as far as we know, those are just going to be the balance changes that are on the PTR at the yeah. moment. So everyone will already know about those. Um, but, yeah, so she'll, be she'll almost certainly be playable on the show floor unless something very weird has happened. Um, and then I would expect she would come uh, to the public uh, with a PTR update uh, probably on Tuesday. Yeah, so stay tuned um, on the website for all of Ben's musings as to how Sombra plays. I'll have Sombra some thoughts. Plays. I'll have and some well, thoughts. He will have some takes of varying temperatures. Um, so those will go up on the site, and then obviously we'll talk in detail uh, about all of that next Wednesday. Um, and we'll get other things as well. We'll get a map. Yeah, uh, like a map is almost guaranteed. I would say this is not quite as guaranteed as Sombra, which is 
99.9 to the infinite percent yeah. i would say a map is something like 99 percent um but kaplan talked about there being loads of maps um that were in development and one that was really really far along i would expect to see that i would expect to see a short kind of fly through trailer that's mm -hmm. maybe about 50 seconds long uh, that just shows off where it is um probably be like connected to somber in some way you think so like her you? kind of home map as it were yeah um but there are plenty of heroes that they it could also be based around plenty of little stories they've told within the world that they don't have maps for yet um what we don't know is is what game mode it'd be attached to it could be anything from like one of the normal ones it could be a control map or, or a hybrid map or whatever um or it could be something brand new well let's let's skip ahead slightly let's sure. go off piste and and say do we think we will get a new mode like it seems like a possibility yeah this is in the kind of the maybe category this isn't guaranteed or anything um i, I think this one actually entirely depends on how development's gone over the last few weeks um, and if they've discovered, hey, one of these modes that, that Kaplan again talked about in his most recent developer update video, if they discover one of those modes, hey, this really works. Um, I think that we will see that mode and that the map or maps we see will be for that mode. Mm. Um, but if not, I think we will just get a new map that is, you know, one of the modes we've seen before. Um, what's also possible is a kind of half and half situation where we get a new mode, but that new mode is just like one of the old modes slightly remixed like for example hybrid maps at the moment you only ever capture a point and then push a payload mm. and they could maybe make a map that is push a payload and then capture a point Ooh. <laughs> try to control yourselves <laughs> yeah what is actually interesting about that is there's kind of a design challenge there because it's kind of natural that pushing a payload is harder um than capturing a point mm. because pushing a payload is basically the same as capturing a point but it takes longer and the point is moving yeah so whether that is even viable is, is something that remains to be seen but i expect it's something that, that uh, the team has been testing and, and and other things that we will almost certainly have we, it's been a long time since we had an animated short that's the kind of thing that would fit nicely in a sort of flashy opening ceremony video package so that's almost a cert right yeah exactly it, that kind of depends on exactly how much time they have dedicated to overwatch in the opening ceremony mm. and, and how long a new animated short would be but it's been since gamescom that was in august right yes that was the last time we saw one that was announced as this is the start of the second season of mm. overwatch shorts been a while since we saw one this it's is exactly the to kind leave of... it between saying that yeah. and you know it's, it's nearly four months i think this is um... the longest gap other than between the launch of the game and, and the first and bastion's one, one. Yeah. yeah so I, I would really expect to see one i also think it is just the kind of thing that they really want to play during the opening ceremony you know with ten thousand massive blizzard fans in the audience who can all really enjoy it together and everyone's eyes will be on it and they really like showcasing casing those i mean the amount of effort they put into them is bonkers oh, like they are they, they look are like fantastic. pixar movies yeah, like really great. Yeah. whatever you may think of of blizzard storytelling in general the pure technical effort that goes into them is so massive that if they're going to showcase them they're not going to put it behind like a paid stream or anything no they're going to want yeah, that to be front and center that's fair and it's their annual celebration so it's a good time to go look how good we are at doing stuff and that is something they are de definitely brilliant at um and then there's this long teased graphic novel first strike which I, I don't know you seem to think we'll we'll get more of or we'll get the whole thing or yeah i think this is gonna make a showing that they've actually i think they mentioned it when they initially announced the game they certainly said we're going to do comic yeah. books because you know it's it's so obviously a comic book universe well, a exactly. saturday morning cartoon universe um and so yeah it's called overwatch first strike it's about the original team which is like reaper and soldier 76 and so on um all back when they were for originally formed overwatch and they were fighting against the omnic kind of crisis as it were um and whether we i don't think this will be during the opening ceremony um because there's so much other stuff that we've talked about that they'll want to pack into yeah. the you know five ten minutes of overwatch stuff that they have time for um but there is a specific blizzard publishing panel on the saturday right um we will have some coverage of that on the saturday uh, I think it's about halfway through the day, so for the UK, that'll be around 9pm, um, and in the US, yeah, yeah about, about midday. Um, and yeah, I expect to see, it's meant to come out during November, so I assume we'll get a release date, but that information is like super out of date, they haven't given regular updates yeah. on it, so it could be, have been pushed into 2017. Um, I feel like that would be a short lead up window if they announced it at blizzcon and said it's out this year well i, I something think, like that it feels like the run-up would be longer yeah i think the digital edition is meant to be during november and then but as you a, say a isn't that, published that version date is like well out of date as it were yeah it is yeah so, so it, it, could it could be, be december it could be february yeah. yeah um but i i think we will definitely see something about it because I, I, it was kind of expected that there would be more of the overwatch extended universe talked about sooner 
um and like you know like comic books and that sort of thing and they've, mm. they've done um they've done free stuff online that's like you know 15 pages long or whatever but they haven't released anything that like if you're really into overwatch and you really want to know what's going on hey buy this for however much and and um you know it's really high quality and it's had a lot of work put into it so i think there's a lot of expectation for that sort of thing to start happening um and so i i would expect it to be this year um but yeah if it is november it'll be late november um right. and if not it might you know it'll come around for christmas so that people can buy it for i'm going to say i'm going to say next year can hold me right, to that. that's joel's prediction joel's prediction that's my lock of the week um so now we can sort of go down like, further down the scale of probabilities uh, as we've mentioned a possible new mode another hero no i'm not having this i'm going to say that as well i'm not having this i don't think we'll see anything of a second this is definitely a really low chance one. i think the people hoping for this are, are kidding themselves and are also the kinds of people that thought sombra was going to come out this week that was yeah. that was never going to happen i'm i'm really sorry i, I, I wanted it to happen we, we all wanted it we to all happen. need more hope in this world but come on guys <laughs> and it just didn't um yeah th there's a possibility that we see a new hero uh there's a couple of possible uh, there's like a couple of ones they've teased a little more um which are Liao who is another member of the founding team of Overwatch who was mentioned in like one article and has been suspiciously absent for all from all of the communication on it and then there's Doomfist who is kind of the villain um of the piece that hasn't really been mentioned but has a lot of uh, like tertiary things in maps and that sort of thing um both are obviously characters that they will develop eventually mm. um and people would love there to be another uh, another hero what's a little more likely is that within the like sombra trailers or within other stuff that they show we get further teases towards these characters and we the whole the whole arg process begins I'm again joel i'm absolutely not having it I, I think that'd be great but i just don't see it like they've te they've the sombra tease has been so extended and taken so long and yeah. taken so long they're not gonna like you know I, I was about to say a really crude expression, but they're not going to like jump the gun um, <laughs> by by starting the all their eggs into one of, of another one um, when they still haven't fully finished the announce of Sombra. So I'm I'm not having it again. It'd be great, but yeah, I, I, I just and don't with see like it. development schedules as well. Like yeah. you have a team that will be working on characters, and they will only have so much focus they I can reckon, give to individuals. I reckon right? Sombra map and mode. Uh -huh. You think it. that's likely? Yeah, yeah I, think that's I, likely. I think if you're placing bets, yeah. that plus like a, an animated short and, yeah. Yeah. and something to do with the comic is book a, is still, very likely. You know, given what we've had for the last five months or so, there's still quite a wedge of new stuff to, to drop in one go, as it were. It's pretty significant, and I think maybe we'll probably see, there's, there's there's other stuff that we might see, like you know, some new skins. Like last time they did a reveal of a new map, a couple of skins came along with it because it was Reinhardt's yeah. like hometown and yeah, they, yeah. those two Reinhardt skins were really good as well like they were really nice looking skins so if the map isn't based around Sombra or, or if it has connection to other characters we might also see a couple of new legendaries for another character um so there'll be I think there'll be lots of little small stuff and then Sombra right at the top being mm. like whoa look at me and then maybe a new mode yeah. definitely a new map as kind of a secondary tier and then yeah like I said lots of lots of little bits So uh, BlizzCon still, obviously it's all BlizzCon today, but uh, a slight, slightly different angle on BlizzCon, which is the esports side of things. They are going to be hosting the Overwatch World Cup there. Are you excited, Ben? I actually am, and I'm really <laughs> okay. hoping I have some time. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm excited about an Overwatch thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's everyone's surprise. super surprised. Um, yeah, I, I am pretty excited for this, and I'm really hoping I've got some time to be able to go and see, hopefully, the finals or at least a couple of group games. Um, but Not it, least because it's such a weird format. Yeah, so it's a World Cup in more than just like a piece of terminology. It's it's done by nations, not by your classic esports teams. There's no prize pot, uh, yeah. etc. So it's a, it's a very different set of setups, as it were, yeah, to, yeah. to yeah, your it, average it, esports tournament, right? It's super, it's super different, and people have tried to do this sort of thing in all sorts of different games. Um, and of course, obviously, it doesn't work as well because you end up with like. I think even even the most the teams with the most people from each team on them, like I think like the Swedish team still has three teams within it, like three proper you right. know, professional teams. So obviously these are people that don't play together all the time. Mm -hmm. They won't have had a lot of practice time because their you know their schedule of practice will still be focused on their team because that is who pays them. Yeah. Like if I'm doing a collaborative piece with somebody, you're not going to be expecting me to spend more time on that than I would on my normal day job. And Definitely I think not. everyone would expect that within uh, you know within a, a normal employment atmosphere which is what you know esports so is these days what, what i mean the thing i'm thinking is how do we think the standard will compare then to to a, a tournament in which teams are playing with their their teams that like you say the teams that employ them because it feels like 
that dynamic is going to be diminished and therefore we might see a lower standard of play? Yeah, it's possible. Um, part of the reason this actually works is that because Overwatch is so young and there's only been like there's one tournament that has been like the big tournament and there's been you know a few others that have been you know pretty major but you know it hasn't even really had its kind of international or its league worlds where here are the two best teams in the world mm. and they're going to fight it out and it's going to be the highest level of well, Overwatch even play the, the big seen. tournament was won by a something of an outsider right yeah exactly yeah so it's all still up in the air and in other games when they try and do this kind of world cup thing people just don't tune in because they know it's going to be a lower standard of play mm. and because there's so many tournaments for those other games that whenever you want to see your favorite team who have the best play Players playing against your least favorite team who also have really good players and you can really cheer for your team you can just do that mm. whereas in overwatch that hasn't been the case so far so will the standard of play be lower almost certainly because you know like we were saying that they, they haven't um had the practice together that you would expect from from professional teams but it isn't going to be as obvious as it would be in something like CSGO. No, and I suppose part of the appeal is that, like you say, we haven't had this many Overwatch tournaments, we haven't reached saturation points, so it's just an Overwatch tournament which people will want to watch because they haven't seen loads and loads of them already. Yeah, exactly, and and I think Blizzard know that, and they're kind of they're putting it in the centre of BlizzCon. It's not in like the esports arena. It's yeah, not it's fighting a big for thing attention from other people. Right? Yeah, it's it's in. They've replaced where they usually put like the second load of talks. They normally have a main stage and a panel stage that's next to it. And instead of where that panel stage usually is, it's somewhere else. It's kind of sequestered off to the side slightly. I'm sure it's still massive. Mm. But in there, they've put the Overwatch World Cup. Like, come and see our new game. Come and see it played at a reasonably high level. Maybe not the highest level. Um, and come cheer for your favourites and... and please look at our new eSport, you know. Yeah, and speaking of favourites, I haven't been keeping up on the bookies' uh, odds, but you, you you tell me that the Koreans are the favourites. Um, I mean, it's an eSports tournament, so yeah, pretty <laughs> well, much, yeah. Enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the South Koreans kind of, they dominated their group super hard. Um, there hasn't been a lot of, like, international competition in the game. It isn't quite at the point where people are willing to, I think, um, pay the flight fees to, to send teams from different regions over well, to fight no, each other, no, other than EU versus US. No concerted prize pool like that. It's sort of understandable, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So this is kind of one of the first times we'll see, okay, is South Korea just going to be as dominant in this as they are in everything else? Um, traditionally, they haven't been as good at shooters as the West, Um but I think that has more to do with them not playing them yeah. rather than, rather than you know them not having their usual level of just massive skill at video games. Um, but th there are other teams that that will definitely get cheered. And I, I, like I don't think it's going to be like one of the things where oh here come the Koreans taking all the prize money again. Not least because there's no prize money. Well, yeah. But because yeah, like I said, there's so little familiarity with the scene that seeing the Koreans win is going to be interesting. And like oh okay, here's a shooter they're good at. All right, is this the usual thing or is it? Um, them just having an early advantage and we can and even just the setup of having it sort of grouped by nations makes it means people can get on board even if they, you know, they don't follow a particular esports team you know it's in america there's a usa team chance of usa <laughs> usa will no doubt go you know ringing around the arena it's and going that, to happen yeah, yes and that's, that's at least a you know, spectacle if nothing else right? i really hope those guys get far just because that will be really cool um, in the same way that like this year in StarCraft that it's like the highest chance of a non-Korean winning that there's been in probably the history of the game since Brood War in like 20 years um, it's going to be really good to see if a US team can do well at Overwatch just because home soil US crowds it, it's just the best thing for, for esports so Although you might not know it by the title of this uh, video series, there are other games that Blizzard make. There are other um, games in the world. There are other games in the world, um, and there will be other games at BlizzCon, and there might be some big stuff for these other games. Um, we'll run through them sort of quick fire, rapid fire. Um, the biggest one, it's what seems to be the headline game of the show this year, is Hearthstone. So tell us what's going to happen in Hearthstone. Yeah, Hearthstone have the first major panel after the opening ceremony, which would suggest it's where the focus is going. Um, there's going to be a new expansion announcement. They alternate between expansions and the smaller adventures, which have the single player bits. Um, it's an expansion's turn. They've been doing teases uh, on social media. There's a post up on the on PC Games N if you want to see all of them. Um, but it all seems to be focused around Gadget Zan, which is a neutral town within World of Warcraft, um, and it'll probably evolve a lot of goblins um, and Hearthstone's usual humour. And a beautiful segue there too, World of Warcraft. Tell us about World of Warcraft. Um, so it's almost certain that we'll see stuff about the next patch, I think. They started teasing the first patch when they were still hadn't even released the game, Yeah, like you were there during Gamescom. Um, 
and so I expect we'll see some stuff about patch 7.2. They've been saying over and over and over again, hey, we've got a content plan. This isn't going to be like Warlords of Draenor where nothing happens for loads of time. They're going to want to prove that like as much as possible over the next like six or eight months. So yeah, they'll want to say, hey, we've just released this this patch. This raid is coming out like next week. But if you're not interested in that, here's what's happening next. Um, and that'll probably be, yeah, like another raid, um, probably an area of the world to explore and that sort of thing. What a balls up wall was a drainer was. Sorry to just divert it was slightly, but just it just bit. reminded me as to how badly handled that was. It was pretty incredible. Really and having was. seen Legion, like at the time, I didn't realize quite how bad it was until Legion came out. And it was like, oh, oh, right. It can, oh, it can be like this. It's oh, so bad. Right. Um, anyway, um, Starcraft, what will we get in the Starcraft world? So this is a little more up in the air. There's definitely another um, single-player segment to come. They said there were going to be three Nova Kova Ops packs. We've had two. The story still needs to be finished. They've also said we're not getting any single-player content um, in 2017. Uh, we had an interview about that um, a few couple of months yeah. ago now. I think it was a Gamescom it was, where yeah. they confirmed that. Um, so we'll definitely get that. I think we'll also see um, a lot of stuff around their big end-of-year patch. They're trying to kind of rebalance the game quite quite significantly and turn it into something that they can um, continue to develop for many years going forward. The name of the first panel for StarCraft is Foundation for the Future. So they're definitely kind of working out how they can take what is, I think, probably the game they make the least amount of money out of and turn it into something that they can continue to develop, but perhaps without investing as many resources right. as they do in in WoW or Hearthstone or, or Overwatch, almost certainly. Um, here, here on this, we have a rough outline of the script every week that we follow. It says, Heroes of the Storm, new everything. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, like, <laughs> whenever they announce stuff for Heroes of the Storm, it's just like, yeah, we're, here's, like, three new maps and, like, seem to get four new heroes stuff, and it? a bunch of skins. And So, yeah, what I expect to just see new of stuff. everything in Heroes <laughs> of the Storm. Um, probably some stuff about, you know, balance patches if you're more deeper dived into that. But, yeah, there'll, there'll be new heroes. Um, what's kind of a 50-50 is there might be a new event where they've, um, in their first few kind of big patches, they introduced events focused on different games, so we just had like a bunch of StarCraft maps they added. Mm. If I was going to guess, and obviously with the name of the show, perhaps you would assume this, um, it might be time for them to start doing an Overwatch event, bring a few more Overwatch characters in. I think they've got a couple at the moment. Yeah, they have a um, few But already. there's plenty of options there, and like the games are so similar in the way they're designed, if not in the way that that ends up playing out, that it's pretty easy to port them. Um, at least compared to like you know trying to bring a, a World of Warcraft character in or something who sure. has twenty skills rather than four. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, and this is the one other than Overwatch, obviously that I'm I've been sort of most hopeful for is is something to do with Diablo. But I, I feel like the world's going to let me down a bit. I think the world's going to let everyone down on this one. Honestly, it's possible that the answer on Diablo is is nothing. It, it's just like there's a patch coming and it'll have some bits that you're used to. Um, hopefully that isn't the case. There were some leaks recently. Again, you can see them on PCGamesN.com um, that a new hero might be added to the game. Um, but I think what people are hoping for is... is believe it or not a paid for expansion or sequel mm. and what they're going to get is something free um and the reason you know that they're sad about that is because that means that it isn't as big as they would like just like a new new game yeah and, and, and <laughs> it, to be honest it's going to be really weird to ask them why aren't you making something to charge people money for mm. like what the game sold 30 million copies like it, it was massive on console like way bigger than i think anyone thought it was going to be um it was also so big on pc that it you know destroyed the servers the day it came out so obviously like diablo 4 okay maybe it wouldn't sell 30 million copies because you know some people that got into it weren't big fans of it but like if you can make a game and know it's going to get 10 million sales that's probably that's probably worth yeah, doing it's probably that's, enough, isn't it? you know it's probably reasonable so it's going to be really interesting to see what they announce. It's the 20th anniversary of Diablo, um, along with the 25th anniversary of Blizzard themselves. They've got like a lot of stuff about the anniversary going on. There's going to be like a WoW event for it. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm expecting to see a larger than normal patch, maybe with a hero added, and that that is a big addition to the game. Um, but I don't think it's going to be the, the sequel or the expansion that people are hoping for. Right, that's it for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, do be sure to subscribe for next week's episode when we'll be running through all of the uh, BlizzCon fallout and we'll be getting Ben's impressions on what he's seen and played at the show.